What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Before I get into this amazing video that I have prepared for you all, I just wanted to wish each and every one of you a very happy and a blessed Diwali 2024. Now by the time you all are seeing this video, it's going to be about a week, a week and a half after Diwali, just because of busyness after the holiday, but I wanted to show you guys what I made on Diwali day. So although you're seeing it a little late, I just wanted to share all these recipes and of course next to Wali, maybe Navratri, any other holidays that are coming up, you can take some tips and tricks, you can also take some ideas from this video and you can cook up some of these items. So before I get into this video, I just wanted to share that this video is sponsored by two amazing companies today. The first one is one you've been hearing about on my channel for the longest at this point. It is Lotus Bazaar. As you all can see, I've got another awesome kurta on today, sponsored by Kavita over at Lotus Bazaar. Make sure you check out Lotus Bazaar. She is your one-stop shop for all of your Indian wear and your necessities that you might need for a jandi, a wedding, if you're a bride or a groom yourself. She's got everything under the sun. So I'll leave the Instagram and the phone number right here. You can contact her and you can find anything throughout the year. Lots of great options and great prices as well. And the second amazing company that is also sponsoring this video is Emusa Cookware. Now for all of you that don't know, Emusa Cookware is something that we all have in our kitchens. If you own one of those big karahis or those um, caldero pots as the Latin community calls it, that is from the Emusa brand. So you can buy it at Walmart, you can buy it at Target, you can buy them online on Amazon, directly from their website. Wherever you can find them, you can go ahead and buy them. They're great products. These Emusa products are ones that my family has had for many, many years. Now Emusa was kind enough to gift me four of their caldero or karahi pots and everything came out amazing. So I'm gonna show you guys all of the dishes and taste them for you at the end of the video so you can see how they came out as well. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So one of the things that I did that really saved a lot of time was I prepped all of my ingredients the night before and early in the morning before I started cooking. So what I did is I cut up my pumpkin, I cut up my eggplant, I went ahead and cut up my spinach or bhaji, I cut up the potatoes and peeled those, I soaked my chana, and I also boiled it. I have my dal that I've washed, I have some frozen spinach to mix with the fresh one, I have all of my spices and I made sure the night before to grind my garlic, grind some hot pepper as well as some fresh seasoning with some culantro and some other herbs. So by doing all of this and just laying everything out, the food is only going to take about an hour and a half to two hours to all cook. Being that I have four burners on my outdoor stove and I'm going to show you guys how quick and easy it was. So the first thing that we're going to make is my balanje and alu curry or my eggplant and potato curry. So in my bowl here are all my spices. I have my curry powder, I have some masala, I also have some roasted ground jeera, and you're gonna see that I have a couple of whole cloves and a little piece of a cinnamon stick. So at this point, let's start mixing everything up. So in my bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some crushed garlic into all of those spices, and I'm gonna also add in my green seasoning. Like I was mentioning before, my green seasoning has some culantro. If you didn't have that, you could use regular cilantro. I put a little bit of thick leaf thyme, a little bit of garlic, as well as some seasoning peppers inside. And being that I was only cooking a couple of dishes, I did not grind up any hot pepper because I wouldn't have needed that much. So what I did is I just cut some habanero peppers in half and I added it into the food that way. It was still a good amount of food, so I went ahead and just put in a whole one to really give it a nice kick. At this point, I'm just gonna stir everything up very well until we get a thick paste if it's a little too dry, of course, you can add in some water to make it a little wet. So at this point, let's go ahead and chunk our pot for our balanje and alu curry. So into the larger size karahi, being that this is a bigger amount I'm making, I went ahead and I covered the bottom with some vegetable oil or oil of your choice. And what I like to do is add in a couple of cumin or jeera seeds and just let those sputter and get nice and golden brown. Now this addition of all of these whole spices in the beginning, it really makes the curry have a beautiful taste by the end of the process and it also adds a different element of flavor. I'm also going to go ahead and add in those couple of cloves that I had as well as the piece of the cinnamon stick. And I'm just going to stir everything around and let everything get nice and toasty. And while these spices are toasting, I just want to show you in the corner that I have the smallest size karahi filled with some water and I'm waiting for that to come up to a rolling boil. That's going to be for my dal and while all of the other dishes are cooking, I'm going to go ahead and just let that dal boil low and slow until it's done. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add in that spice paste that we made earlier. Like I was mentioning before, you can make any additions or omit anything from the list of ingredients. You just have to go ahead and season it as per your own taste and preferences. So what I like to do whenever I add my curry paste into the pot is that immediately when you add it in, it tends to stick a little bit. So I like to go in with a little bit of water and I can wash out that bowl 
to get all of those seasonings out and just continue to stir this up until everything is well combined and until the oil releases back from the spice mixture that's how you're going to know that the spice mixture is fully done cooking so the previous screen i was showing you guys a different stove where i had the curry starting to cook and i also have the dal water coming up to a rolling boil now i have a second stove right next to it and i have my other two karahis and what i'm going to go ahead and do is fill both of them up with oil and i'm going to start off making my bhaji as well as my pumpkin now whenever you're making bhaji and pumpkin especially when you're making it vegetarian style it's very quick and very simple you just have to make sure you start with lots of fresh seasonings so into that oil I'm starting off by going in with some sliced onions and on top of those onions I'm also going to go in with some freshly sliced scallions and once you get those scallions in you're just going to mix everything well together until they start to fry up and until the onions start to get a little bit translucent now as you all can see I'm literally cooking two pots of food at the same time that's how simple it is because the bhaji and pumpkin take the same type of ingredients and seasonings in the beginning of the process. Now while the onions and the scallions are cooking up and getting nice and soft for the bhaji and the pumpkin, I'm going to work on this curry mixture that I had starting to cook in the corner. So what I like to do whenever making all of my curry paste is I like to go ahead and season it very well with some salt as well as some all-purpose seasoning. Seasoning the curry paste from the beginning of the cooking process before you add in the actual vegetables that you're cooking, it makes the curry taste much better in the end. I'm just going to stir this all together and continue to let it cook. As you can see, it's actually almost done because the oil has started to release. And once you see that the oil has fully released from the spice mixture and it starts to stick at the bottom a little bit and you you let it cook for about five to six minutes you know that that curry paste is done so we're going to add in our sliced onions as well as our chopped scallions now once you add the aromatics in you're going to go ahead and let them fry up very well until those onions start to soften a bit as well and at any point in the cooking process if you see that the spice mixture is sticking a little bit too much and you don't want it to start burning you can add in just a little bit of water just to bring up those bits that are stuck to the bottom of the pot and the reason why these calderos or these karahis are so good is because the first or second time that you cook in them the food might start to stick a little bit but the more you use them and the more you cook in them the more you end up seasoning the pots and the food will no longer stick after a couple of uses so as you can see it took no time to get that curry started and at this point I'm just going to turn back to my pots where I had the onions and the scallions frying up for the bhaji and the pumpkin. You can see that those onions and scallions have fried up very well. Now at this point I'm going to add in some more seasonings. So into the pots I'm going to go in with a hefty spoonful of some of that green seasoning that I made. And the next ingredient I'm going to be going in with is my garlic and I'm just going to go in with a couple of spoonfuls. And you can see here that I am not using measurements. I'm just using my eyes and I'm going ahead and seasoning it as per the amount of ingredients that I have. Now we're just going to stir all of these ingredients up very well and allow this to cook until the oil starts to release back a little as well. And once everything has fried up very well, I'm going to go ahead and add in my pepper. Now I have some of these spicy habanero peppers, so half was good enough for the bhaji and the pumpkin because this was a little less than the curry that I was making earlier. So all of those aromatics for the bhaji and the pumpkin are frying up. I'm going to let those continue to fry up and we're going to move back to the curry so we can add everything in. So as you all can see, the oil has released very well from the spice mixture. The onions and the scallions have cooked down as well. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in my balanche. So what I like to do when cooking balanche and potato curry or balanche and edo curry is I like to go ahead and peel some of the eggplants. I don't feel, peel it fully, but I leave a little bit of the skin on only. And then I go ahead and I slice it up very thin. And when I wash it, I squeeze out the eggplant very well. The reason why you want to keep on squeezing it and massaging it under the running water is so this way you can get rid of any of the seeds that are inside. Whenever people eat eggplants, sometimes they say that the seeds end up making their mouth scratch or itch. So that's what it is. It's the actual seeds. And I'm sure you all have seen by now, I make my balanche and potato or balanche and edo curry a little bit differently than everybody else. I do not add in the eggplant and the potato or edo at the same time. What I like to do is add in the eggplant and I let it fry down very well with that curry paste until it started to melt itself because I do not like balanje curry when the pieces of eggplant are still very big and chunky in the end and it does not cook at the same time as the potato or the edo. So that balanje curry has a little while to cook before I can even go ahead and add in the potatoes. So I'm going to let that cook low and slow until the eggplant starts to melt down and dry up. And at this point, let's turn our attention back to the bhaji and the pumpkin. So in those pots, you can see that there's lots of nice golden brown color at the bottom of the pots. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my pumpkin into the first one. And as you all can see, that pumpkin is so orange that it's almost looking red. 
and this pumpkin was super super sweet. I did not have to add in any sugar into this pumpkin to bring out the flavor. It was sweet on its own. And my recommendation is when you're buying a pumpkin, make sure you buy it whole, of course. Same thing goes with the butternut squash. If you're going to go ahead and cook pumpkin, buy it about a week or two before you want to cook it. What that's going to do is it's going to allow it to ripen up just a little bit more and it makes the taste even sweeter in the end. And once you put that pumpkin in, you're going to start to season it up right away. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my salt to taste. And I'm also going to go ahead and add in some all-purpose seasoning. Now you're going to see that I'm using the all-purpose seasoning throughout all of the dishes here today. But if you do not want to use these, you do not have to. You can just go in with your bare salt. And we're just going to stir up the pumpkin very well until it's well combined with all of the onions, the aromatics, as well as the salt and the all-purpose seasoning. And all we're going to do is keep this on a moderate heat and just continue to let it fry down until the pumpkin melts away. If you find at any point in the cooking process that the pumpkin is dry, you can add in a little bit of water to help steam it. And at this point, it's time to add the bhaji into the pot where I had those aromatics frying up. So what I have here is some mustard bhaji or mustard greens, as well as some bok choy or pak choy. And I've cut those up very well. I've washed it very well to get any sand or grit out. And what I like to do is I like to use some of fresh one. And then I like to use some frozen chopped spinach as well. And right on top of the mustard and the bok choy bhaji, I'm going to go ahead and add in my frozen chopped spinach. Now I'm adding in three packs of that frozen chopped spinach that you'd find at your local grocery store. Of course, this is optional. You can use whatever kind of mix of spinach or bhaji that you feel to use. And here comes my biggest tip whenever you're cooking bhaji like this. You want to make sure you allow it to melt down and wilt down a little bit before you add in any salt. So remember, whenever we're cooking for jandis or pujas, we tend to not taste our food as we're cooking it because we want to offer it before we actually take part in eating it. So we don't taste it. So when you're going ahead and averaging the salt, you'll get a better average if you let this wilt down very well so you can get a better feel for the spinach. So being that I have that bhaji cooking away, I have my pumpkin cooking as well. I just want to go ahead and check on that balanje curry that I have here and I want to stir it up and make sure nothing's sticking too much. As you all can see, the eggplant has started to wilt and get nice and soft, but I want to cook it down even more until it starts to melt away and then I'll add in the potatoes. So at this point, we're going to start to work on the dal, being that we have everything else cooking. So into that boiling water, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple pieces of some sliced onion, and I'm also going to be going in with some scallions. Now the onion is optional. A lot of people do not like adding these ingredients in because they say that it makes the dal spoil. Now that really only applies if you cook the dal and then you leave it sitting outside the whole time. Usually whenever we're doing pujas or anything like this where we're going to serve the dal, it's inside under AC so it doesn't spoil as quick. But of course, if you are making this in a very big amount for a lot of people, maybe you want to reduce the amount of onions or skip it. But I also went in with some of my chopped garlic. I also went in with a couple of hot weary weary peppers to boil. And I'm going in with the hefty spoon of my green seasoning as well. Now, all of these little things that I added into the dal, they're definitely optional. You only have to add in garlic and pepper, really, but I like adding in everything else to really give the dal a beautiful flavor. And at this point, I'm going to add in my washed yellow split peas, and then I'm going to go ahead and add in my turmeric or dai. And this, of course, is going to give it that yellow color that dal is known for. You can add in as much or as little as you want. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and add in some more flavor. So I'm going to go in with that all-purpose seasoning. And you can see I'm just adding it in until I get a good average of how much it should have. And on top of that, I'm also going to go in with some salt. Remember when you're making dal, you need a good amount of salt to really bring out the flavor or else it's going to taste bland. And also, if you don't add in enough salt, the dal will not melt and cook properly. So I'm just adding in a little bit more of my dye or turmeric because I want it to be a little bit more yellow. But as of right now, that's it. Just let this boil low and slow until that dal is fully cooked and it starts to melt away. And I'll show you guys what to do when we come up to the finishing steps. So I just want you all to see the action that's going on here. On one stove, I have my balanje curry boiling away. I have my dal boiling away. And on the other one, I also have my pumpkin and bhaji. As you all can see, if you have two different stoves, if you're outside with the space and you have everything prepped, it's very quick and simple and easy to start putting everything together. So it's been about 10 minutes since I put on the pumpkin and the bhaji and everything like that. At this point, I just want to check it. Remember when you're cooking foods like this and you're making a lot of things at the same time, 
you want to make sure to check everything periodically and give them a nice stir so this way nothing burns and this way you don't lose track of anything as well so as you can see this pumpkin was a really good pumpkin because it did not dry up too much and it's already starting to melt away a little bit that is a good sign that it's going to be nice and soft and melted when it's done cooking at any point in the cooking process if you feel like these foods need a little bit more flavor you can go ahead and put a little more green seasoning you could sprinkle a couple of pieces of onion or some scallions on the top as well and you can allow it to cook by layering all the flavors like this you give it a nice freshness and you also really bring out the flavors of the dish and i did taste this i wanted to mention i added in a couple more pieces of pepper because it was not spicy enough I wasn't making any of these dishes for an actual puja today. Like I said, I'm just showing you all what I cooked for my family for Diwali. Of course, if this was for a puja, I would not be tasting the food as I went along. And now we're heading over to the bhaji just to check out how everything is doing. As you all can see, all of that spinach that we added in in the beginning, it's wilted down about halfway. This is the perfect time to add in your salt, so this way you get a better average of how much to add. When it's super fluffy in the beginning, you end up adding in too much salt because you think it's more spinach than it actually is. And I'm going in with the same two seasonings as before. I'm going in with my regular salt as well as some of that all-purpose seasoning. And we're just going to continue to fry this up and allow it to cook down a bit more and let some of that water release and dry up. I do not add the coconut milk in now because if you let the coconut milk cook too long, sometimes the coconut milk ends up separating a bit and the oil starts to release from it. And I don't like when the food has that oily look to it. And at this point, I want to check that balanji as well. As you can see, it's still frying away. You see all of that nice oil released back from the spice mixture and it's dried up very well. I'm going to have to add in just a little splash of water at this point. And the reason being is because I don't want it to stick too much. And I also want to make sure that balanji or the eggplant melts down even more. Like I said, sometimes when people are making this kind of curry, they will just dump the eggplant and the potato or edo in at the same time. And it ends up making the balanji still be very stringy and in big chunks. And then the potato or the edo is all mashed away and melted away. And while you've got your eyes on everything else, you want to make sure that you keep an eye on the dal too and stir it every once in a while. Make sure you keep the heat on a medium heat as well because you do not want the dal to boil over because it will make a very big mess. At this point, I'm checking back in on my bhaji. As you all can see, it started to dry up perfectly and it's wilted down to the most that it can. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and add in my coconut milk. Now for this amount of spinach, I used about two heads of bok choy, one head of mustard bhaji, and three packs of that frozen spinach. So I'm adding in a full can of coconut milk. That was perfect for this. If you're making less, you might have to add in half of a can. If you're making more, you might have to add in two cans. I also washed out the can with a little bit of water and I added that in as well. And I'm gonna let this cook low and slow for maybe about 15 to 20 minutes until everything melts together and the liquid has thickened up a bit as well. And now let me go back to the pumpkin and show you guys what we're working with. As you all can see, that pumpkin has boiled down beautifully. It still has just a couple more minutes to go, but it's almost done. I kid you not, this pumpkin cooked within about 20 to 30 minutes. It didn't take long at all. So let's check back in on the eggplant or the balanje that's been bunjing down with all the spices. As I'm stirring it up, I see that it started to melt down very well. It's only slightly stringy now, and this is the perfect time to add in the edo or the potato, depending on what you're using. It's going to boil down perfectly and give a nice texture in the end. What I'm doing here right now is I'm just adding in a little touch of water, just so I can bring up some of those bits at the bottom of the pot. I do have this on a higher heat, that's why it keeps catching a bit. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add in my peeled and chopped potato. Now, as you guys can see, this is a 16 quart pot, so it's pretty big and it's a lot of curry that this is going to make. It's only two large eggplants and about six to eight potatoes. So it's a lot of curry that this little bit of ingredients is going to make. So I just want to go ahead and fry this up very well until those potatoes get to sear down with the spices and then we're going to add in some water to let everything boil together. So it's been a couple of minutes at this point. I let everything fry up very well before starting to add in water. And at this point, being that this dish has been cooking for a little while, I just want to sprinkle in a couple of scallions just to add a little bit of freshness. And once you see that everything starts to stick again, it is time to go ahead and cover the entire mixture with water. Now we're just going to let this boil low and slow until the potatoes are nice and tender and the eggplant cooks down totally. As you can see, when I added in that water, there's no big chunks of eggplant anymore. It's melted away and it started to make the gravy thick as well. We're going to go back and check in on our pumpkin as well as our bhaji. As you all can see, that bhaji has started to cook down very well. It's also thickening very well too. 
you can see that there's a little bit of liquid left at the bottom and I want to go ahead and let that dry up a bit as well because we don't want any of these foods being watery at all. If you leave too much liquid when they sit, they're going to release more liquid and it's going to be very watery when it's done cooking. And the pumpkin is looking very good as well. We just need to go ahead and let some of that liquid burn out a bit and we also just need to let it cook down more as well. But you see when I'm mashing it with the back of my spoon, all of those large chunks are breaking up very easily and melting away. And I almost forgot to mention, but when you're making your dal, you want to go ahead and add in a little splash of oil while it's boiling. That oil is going to help prevent the dal from boiling over and making a mess. And if at any point throughout the cooking process of this dal that you see it dries up too much and the dal greens are still not done boiling, you want to go ahead and add in a little bit more water. At this point, I want to go ahead and check that balanji and aloo curry that we were making. As you all can see, it's still pretty liquidy. It has to boil down a little bit. But as I'm stirring it up, it started to thicken very well. And those potatoes are about halfway done cooking at this point. It just has to boil down a little low and slow, a little bit more. So this way all of those flavors can marry together and that gravy can thicken up. Now I'm just stirring up my dal to see if it's almost done cooking. As you all can see, it started to melt away a bit, but there's still a couple of grains left at the bottom of the pot. So I'm just scraping down the sides, cleaning up the edges a bit so it doesn't stick on there. And we're just going to continue to let this boil until it melts away. So I'm just going to go ahead and check on my bhaji one more time. And as you all can see, it's really almost done. It's wilted down very well. It's not too overcooked. I like when you use the fresh spinach. It has a little slight crunch left in it when it's done cooking. But this is coming up on the finish line. We just have to go ahead and let it boil down a little bit more. You can see this is a little bit of liquid left at the bottom and we don't want that to sit there. As for my pumpkin, it is totally done. As you all can see, it's nice and mashed up. It's melted away and it is ready to come off of the heat. So I'm just going to transfer this into a small bowl and I'm going to use the same pot and make my fried chana in after I'm done emptying this. And look how amazing that pumpkin looks. That pumpkin was so sweet when I was eating it. It has such a deep red and orange color. This was perfect. I'm just topping it with some fresh scallions and I'm going to leave this off to the side while I cook the rest of my dishes. So at this point, my balanje and aloo curry is done cooking. As you all can see, it's thickened up very well. This is the amount of gravy that I'm going to leave inside of it. If you wanted to leave a little bit more, you could as well. But the potatoes are done cooking and I'm going to take it off and just top it with some fresh scallions now. So being that some of my pots are freeing up at this point, it is time to make my bile fried chana. So into my karihi, I'm going to go ahead and add in some oil to cover the bottom of the pot. And I'm going to go in with a couple of cumin or jeera seeds. Now for this dish, if you wanted to add in a couple pieces of clove and a little piece of a cinnamon stick to fry up here, you can also do that, but I will not be doing that today. And once those cumin seeds get nice and golden brown, it's time to go in with some freshly chopped onions, as well as some chopped scallions. Now, whenever you're making violin fried chana, in my opinion, it needs a lot of onions and a lot of scallions. What that does for me is it adds such a nice flavor and adds a nice little crunch to the finished dish. We're just going to stir this up very well until those onions and scallions cook down. At this point, we're going to continue to add in our aromatics. I'm just going to go in with a piece of the scotch bonnet pepper that I was adding into all of the dishes. And now I'm going to go in with my chopped garlic. And I'm also going to be going in with some of that homemade green seasoning that I had made before. Like I said, if you have not been using green seasoning or freshly ground seasoning in your vegetarian foods when you're cooking it like this, I definitely recommend giving that green seasoning a try because it is a game changer for how amazing it makes the food taste. Now, while all of those aromatics are frying up for my bile and fried chana, I'm just going to check in on that bhaji one last time. As you all can see, all of the liquid has reduced from it. It's nice and thick at this point, and it's no longer very watery and liquidy. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the stove, and I'm going to transfer it into a small bowl and top it with some scallions, and this is ready to serve as well. So once all of those seasonings fry up very well for the bile and fried chana, it's time to add in the boiled chickpeas or chana. Now I soaked and boiled these until they were tender, but of course you can add in the canned one here. I'm also going to season it with some all-purpose seasoning, some salt, as well as some roasted ground cumin or jeera. If you wanted to, you can add in a little bit of masala. You could also use some tomato paste and you can also use a sazan packet to give it a nice color as well. All of these optional seasonings are up to you and your tastes and preferences. But you just want to stir this up very well. I'm going to go ahead and add in a couple tablespoons of water just to allow all of these ingredients to melt up and bind with the chana. And then it'll be done. Being that we parboiled this before, it, the chana is already done cooking. You just have to fry it up with everything. So it's very quick. Now coming back to the dal, as you all can see, it's thickened up nicely. You can see from the side of the pot that it's reduced. 
Now I haven't goateed or swizzled the dal at all, and as you all can see the dal has pretty much melted on its own by cooking on this stove. So after I added in that water to the chana, I had covered it and I allowed it to cook for a couple of minutes just to steam it a little bit more and allow all of those flavors to really marry together. As you all can see, there's a slight amount of liquid left at the bottom of the pot, but I just wanted to go in and stir it and make sure nothing was sticking. I'm gonna continue to let this fry up until it's well dried out at the bottom and then it'll be done. Now at this point, it is time to chunky our dal. So in a little saucepan, I added in some oil to cover the bottom and once it got hot, I added in my cumin or my jeera seeds. Now big tip whenever you're making dal and chunking it at the end, you have to add in the jeera before you add in your garlic. The reason being is because if you add in the garlic, the jeera seeds will not brown and get nice and toasty. They have to do so on their own. Once those cumin seeds get nice and fragrant and you see that they start to get golden brown, it's time to go in with your freshly chopped garlic. We're just going to continue to stir this around and allow this to cook until the garlic is nice and dark brown as well. And once that garlic gets nice and dark brown, it is time to chunky that dal. What I like to do is just go ahead and toss in some fresh scallions on the dal. And right on top of those fresh scallions, you can go in with that mixture that you're gonna use to chunky the dal. And that's gonna help cook those scallions a bit too and allow them to steam in it as well. Now look at that. If that's not a beautiful pot of dal, I don't know what is. This was absolutely perfect. And as that dal was finishing, my bailan fry chana was finishing at the same time. Like I said, depending on how long you boil those chana or chickpeas for, or if you're using the canned one, it'll take pretty quick to cook. So it's done for me. It's nice and mushy and they're soft. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer it into a small bowl. I'm also going to top it with some of those fresh scallions. And this right here is ready to serve. And with that, all of my amazing dishes that I've made for this Diwali season are all done cooking. So as you all can see, the process really was not that difficult. Once you go ahead and prep all of your ingredients and all of your seasonings and wash your pots and all that good stuff, it's very quick just to go ahead and throw in the aromatics and stew down whatever veggies or curries that you're gonna make. Now, it took me about an hour and a half to finish all of these dishes today just from cooking them. And last night when I prepped all of my ingredients, it took about maybe an hour to an hour and a half as well by the time I cut up everything, ground everything, and I washed my new pots and everything like that. So don't be overwhelmed whenever you're making a lot of dishes, especially for Diwali like I did here. You guys go ahead and just go for it because once you prep yourself, it'll be super, super quick. So of course, I have my dal that we made. You can see that I love my dal floating up with lots of scallions, pepper. I chunkate it with some nice jeera and some garlic, and I like everything floating on top. Of course, if you wanted to make it more on the plain side, you don't have to add in all those things that I put in. Also, I have my balanje and my aloo curry. Um, this one's a little bit different. Usually people would make balanje and edo curry, or they would just do plain potato curry or aloo and chana curry, but I just wanted to do something a little bit different today for my curry choice, and this came out absolutely amazing. I gave it a taste, and of course I have my fried pumpkin. This pumpkin was amazing. I didn't have to add in any sugar, and it melted down within 20 to 25 minutes. It didn't take long at all. And just look how vibrant and orange this pumpkin is. When it was outside cooking, the camera wasn't catching that amazing color, but here it is. And of course, I have my Bailan fried chana. This is something that we make whenever we do seven curry. Um, in my family, we don't do chana and aloo curry, and we don't do balanche and edo when we have our jandis and stuff. We would make fried chana, and we'd make aloo curry separately on the side. But of course, I know different families make their own variation as well. And lastly, we have that delicious bhaji. Now this was the bok choy that I went ahead and cut up. I cut up some mustard bhaji as well, and I had some regular American frozen chopped spinach. And I love mixing it because of all the different textures that you get. And it smells amazing because of that coconut milk that we stewed it down with. All right, everyone, so let's dig into this food here. So I have my plate of rice. Now for me, I don't like to put too much, too much rice because I've got all of this deliciousness to add on. And of course, if I had roti, I would have even put less rice. So just so this way I could soak up a little bit of that dal. But anyway, you got my rice, make a little hole in it, just so that dal can sit in the center. And I'm gonna stir up this nice and thick and spicy dal. And you guys gotta smell this. All the food is still hot. I just finished cooking it and these karahis keep the food nice and warm as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a nice ladle of that dal, get it all inside of that rice. And some people like to flood their plate. When I'm done here and I start to eat, I might have to put a little bit more. 
I'm gonna go ahead and take this um, balanje and potato curry. I'm gonna take a nice little piece of potato. And this is how I like the eggplant. I like when the balanje is nice and fine and it melts together. I don't like when it's super thick and stringy still. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my curry here on the side. And you can make this with more or less gravy depending on your tastes and your preferences, of course. And now I'm gonna go for that bhaji. So, take a little bit here, put that on the side as well. And I'm gonna use the same spoon right here. So, take a little bit of the fried chana, put it here. And I'm also gonna go in with just a little bit of my pumpkin. This one right here is my favorite. Add some of that on, put a little bit more. And look at that plate of food. Look how amazing that looks. So just for some good measure, let's put a little bit more dal on the top and then we can go from there. And this is it. My Diwali 2024 meal. All right, everyone. So I promise you I'd give this delicious lineup a try. So here it is. I still feel the food. It's nice and hot. I'm just smelling everything. Absolutely amazing. So I'm going to go on with some clean hands today. No judgment here. This is the way you got to eat this kind of food. And if I had one of those leaves, that would be even better to eat this on top of. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take a little bit of that rice and the dal. Mix that up. Little balanje curry. Little bit of the bhaji a little bit of my fried chana, and of course that sweet and orange pumpkin. I'm gonna mix everything together real quick, and I'm gonna give it a taste for you all. This food is absolutely amazing. Everything has the right amount of pepper. I cooked everything with a whole one of the Scotch bonnet peppers. Absolutely amazing. The curry has the perfect balance of flavors with the masala and the curry powder. That little piece of cinnamon stick that I added in, you guys definitely go ahead and try it, especially when you're making potato curry. It makes all the difference. And that pumpkin that I made here is so sweet. And as you can see, whenever pumpkin is orange like this, you know that it is nice and sweet. And this was perfect. The bhaji has a nice coconut milk taste as well. I'm gonna have to go sit down and enjoy the rest of this probably take seconds. But with all of that said, and all of that delicious food in my belly right now, I hope each and every one of you guys had an amazing Diwali at home. I hope you enjoyed the little lineup of dishes that I made for my Diwali celebration. And I hope you can take some inspiration from this and make it for the next Hindu holiday or your next puja or whatever it is that you're having at your home. Once again, a big shout out goes to Lotus Bazaar for the amazing outfit that I'm wearing today, as well as the amazing lineup of outfits that you saw me wearing since my Navratri and Diwali series where I was posting all of my sweets and different food items. She always has great items, always supporting my channel. So make sure you check out Kavita. Contact information will be here and in the description box below. And of course, without these amazing karahis that you saw me using today, these dishes would not have come together as well as they did. So big shout out to Amusa Cookware for the amazing products. Thank you for always supporting me as well. This is another one of the many videos that I've done with them and I hope to continue doing this with them. And if you guys want to go ahead and purchase from them, like I mentioned, go to any one of your local stores, grocery stores, especially the Caribbean or West Indian, as well as the Latin grocery stores, you'll find these pots and the utensils as well. And of course, I'll leave some Amazon links and the direct website so you can buy from them as well. So if you all enjoyed, please don't forget to give this video a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet. Make sure you click that red subscribe button so this way you never miss out on any of my new videos. And of course, drop your comments down below and let me know what you made for your Diwali celebrations. And please stay tuned for my next video. Bye everyone.